Well, hello YouTube. I want to do a video on the myth of the electric car because you know with your gas price and everything go up and the Biden administration and some of these states like New York and California are wanting to push electric cars on people more than anything else. But the media and the liberals make it sound like electric cars are a new technology. They're not. As a matter of fact, their electric cars were invented before gasoline power cars. Matter of fact, before gas, even electric cars, they were electric trains. The first electric locomotive was built and designed in the 1830s, right around 1834. But the first successful electric car was 1881 by a French designer. And it was kind of like an electric tricycle, but it was basically, it was a car. And they have been around ever since. And in the early days of the 20th century, 1900, 1910, the electric cars outnumbered gasoline-powered cars by two to one at least. There were some 300 electric car companies prior to the Great Depression. Edison made them. Baker was one of the more famous ones. But they were everywhere. So what happened? What happened to electric cars that they didn't survive? That they kind of just, and they never did go away completely. There were car, had always been electric cars. But what happened? What happened was, is people moved out of the cities. You had, the problem with electric cars was the same problem you have electric cars now. They were expensive, very expensive. They were luxury items. Uh, most of them were taxi cabs, like in New York City and Baltimore, and over in Europe. They were very popular in Europe, like England and London. Um, they were heavy. They were hard to maintain. They, of course, had the issues if you had to start them and run them. They took forever to charge. They had the same problem you have now. The biggest problem was reliability and range. Once automobiles like the Model T Ford showed up, which were cheap, economical, and you could go somewhere, but you didn't have to spend a fortune doing it, the electric cars started to die out, especially once you got out of the cities. By the 1920s, 1930s, the electric car was more or less on its way out, at least as far as popularity. But they never did officially die. Uh, in the 1950s, in East Germany, the Deutsche Mail, the, the German mail for the East Germans, was delivered by electric vehicles. The Japanese have always been working with electric vehicles. They've never officially gone away, but they've always been there. But the problem is, it's always been the same thing it is, as it is now. They're more expensive, they don't have the range of a gasoline-powered vehicle, and they're harder to work on and harder to maintain. Now, like right now, for instance, if you were to try to buy a Tesla, an entry-level Tesla is going to cost you at least between forty dollars and $50,000. And they just don't make that many of them. You have the Rivian. Okay, the Rivian, they're, they've even announced this year, they're only, they've cut back production. They're only going to make 25,000 Rivians this year. And they start around between eighty to $90,000. They are not economical. There's nothing economical and uh, cost affordable when it comes to an electric car, especially since you're going to have to put them at your house. You're going to have to charge them, which means as high as your electric bill may be now, it's going to be higher. So you have that. The other thing is, again, like I said, the numbers, the numbers game. Um, usually Tesla, I believe the last figure I saw with Tesla is around 50,000 automobiles entirely, production numbers per year. Now, while that may sound a lot, 
Um, you have, say, take the Subaru Crosstrek, which is one of their more popular cars. The Subaru Crosstrek, it, they, in the year like right around 2020, they made something in the neighborhood of well over 100,000 Crosstreks alone. Just Crosstreks. You're not talking even the Outbacks, the Foresters, and say any of the other model cars that they made. Just Crosstreks. So, again, it sounds like a lot, but not compared to all the other cars that are out there. So you have to figure out, gee, you're talking 300 million, 330 million people in this country. Say 100 million drive. You're going to make that many people try to buy electric cars that aren't there. And what's going to happen when you force them to try to buy them? The prices will go up even more. You, and this is part of the Green New Deal and the whole myth of electric cars, that they're so much better no, they're not. They're one, they had the issues with the Chevy Volts where they had the fire hazards. And you're seeing, even with Teslas, you'll see one occasionally spontaneously combust. Because of the batteries. They have battery issues with them. Repairs. Okay? When it comes to repairing a Tesla, what garage do you take it to? Because when you order a Tesla, you don't buy it from a dealership. You order it online and it's delivered to you. So if, you, if your Tesla develops problems, where do you take it? Where does it go? What garage works on it? Okay, sure, they can do the brakes and the tires and the simple things, but what about the electrical system, which is essentially the entire car? They've already had problems with the new Ford Mustang EVs. that's well over forty five to fifty thousand dollars as an entry level they're not economical cars and okay so you get say in the range of 300 miles per charge is that at night with the headlights on which would drain the power in the winter with the heater on which would also drain the power and also like when they do the gas mileage standards for your car when you buy a car that will sticker on the side of it that says it gets as many miles a gallon if you read the fine print that's at 60 miles per 60 miles an hour not highway speed normally 70 or better now when they they say the range of your tesla or whatever is say 300 miles is that during the day is that at night is that on, say, you know, what? Not, see, that's information. I'm assuming that's at its best. Best weather issues like that. What if you drive, like, say, where I am, where there really aren't that many charging stations, and this is not, you know, we're not out in the boondocks. We're in a rural, more rural area, but there's still highways. There's still everything. There are no charging stations here. The last ones are about two miles south of me. There are, as far as I know, I don't even know of charging stations north of me. So how do you charge your car if you have no place to charge it? What do you do? And then, of course, you have to take 30 minutes out of your char out of your drive to charge your car because that's what it takes to charge a Tesla, about 30 minutes on average. So it, it's the myth that it is a better car. I say it's not. Where Now, where I think the technology is better is the hybrids. Hybrids have been around for a long time. If you don't believe that, take a look at the submarine designs. Your submarines have been hybrids for almost a century, if not more. Uh, Auto diesel, hence the name of the diesel engine, um, and the inventors of your really first practical submarines realized that you could not run the engine in a submarine while it is submerged unless you want to die of carbon monoxide poisoning. So what do submarines do? This has been in the case of World War I, World War II. Um, the submarines would run their engines while on the surface to recharge their electric batteries. And then submerged, they would run on the batteries. That's hybrid technology. It's been around for a long time. And it is much more reliable, much more reliable than, say, you know, an electric car that may strand you somewhere. I have no problem with hybrid technology, none whatsoever. 
Um, but a lot of these new cars, because of these safety standards, now here in New York, Governor Hochul has just, in the midst of all these high gas prices, average right now is 439, 449 up here. In the midst of all this, has decided that now we're going to map standards to make more cars more efficient. And that's going to be a, a, basically a law. So you're already going to make it harder for people now. Because now on top of everything else, you're going to make it harder for car companies to sell cars in this state the way they already are. Um, one of the cars that I drive gets 30 miles per gallon. The thing just goes and goes and goes. On a full tank of gas, 400 miles, no problem. And that's not even a big tank. You know, even some of the other vehicles I drive, they're not that bad. This, the, the cars have come a long way. The gasoline has come a long way. It's The electric cars are a myth. Yes, they are more efficient to the environment, except when it comes to the batteries. Because you have to dig the materials out of the ground to make the batteries, and then you have to ship the batteries here. None of that's done in this country anymore. That's done overseas. Now, what if these countries all of a sudden suddenly decide, hey, by the way, we're going to make it more pricey for you to even get the batteries for these cars. Because there's a whole bunch of them. And that's another thing. Ask yourself if you really would like to be riding around sitting on a bunch of batteries because that's how electric cars work. Most of them, the batteries are under your ass. Um, no, that's not my thing. That's really not something I want to do. Yes, well, the gas tank, at least, it's behind me. But it's, there's, it's still, I mean, and I think gas or electric cars probably will get better. They're going to come a lot farther. But the technology isn't there now to demand that everybody has to have one. That everybody must have one. Or else. But that's, the problem is, is now they're going to make you have them. You're going to be made to own electric cars. You're not going to have a choice anymore. And that's unfortunate. And that's also the way these liberals are going to behave. They're not going to make it so that you have the opportunity anymore to say, well, I don't want that. Because the Green New Deal didn't pass the way they wanted it to. So they're going to make you do it their way. And with that being said, YouTube, have a good day.